Well, hi there and welcome to our Revelation Bible study. In my mind, today is a significant day because on the Lighthouse Discord server, while we haven't celebrated the fact or remembered that it's 9-11, it is. And we are speaking today in our study about Armageddon and the bowls of wrath that will come down upon the earth for people who have been disobedient to God. Let's pray. Father, we give you thanks and praise and glory and honor for who you are, for all that you've done for us on the cross. Because you sent your son, Jesus, to bear our sins, our sorrows, our sickness, to die on that cross for us, to rise again three days later, ascend to heaven, and will come back for us, your children. Lord God, as today is September 11th, 19 years ago it was, Lord, that there was so much devastation in the United States. And there's so many conspiracy theories around it. There's so much talk about what happened and who caused it. And here on the Lighthouse Discord server, we're not about that. Instead, Lord, what we're about is we remember those who were injured or killed during that time. Father, may you be with those families who are, were impacted by that, God. May you bring them peace and comfort and healing and your joy unspeakable and full of glory and your strength during this time. And God, would you open our hearts and our minds and our ears to receive the words you would have for us today as we review Revelation 16 and as we carry on in our study today. In your holy, mighty name we pray with thanksgiving in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so I'm reading from the New American Standard. And we read mo all of this last time, but I'm going to quickly try and read it again. Revelation 16, starting at verse 1, six bowls of wrath. <coughs> Excuse me. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, go and pour out on the earth the seven bowls of the wrath of God. So the first angel went and poured out his bowl on the earth, and it became a loathsome and malignant sore on the people who had the mark of the beast and who worshipped his image. The second angel poured out his bowl into the sea, and it became blood like that of a dead man, and every living thing in the sea died. Then the third angel poured out his bowl into the rivers and the springs of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the water saying, Righteous are you, who are and who were, O Holy One, because you judged these things. For they poured out the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink. They deserve it. And I heard the altar saying, Yes, O Lord God, the Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. The fourth angel poured out his bowl upon the sun, and it was given to it to scorch men with fire. Men were scorched with fierce heat, and they blasphemed the name of God, who has the power over these plagues, and they did not repent so as to give him glory. Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom became darkened, and they gnawed their tongues because of the pain. And they blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and they did not repent of their sins. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river, the Euphrates, and its water was dried up so that the way would be prepared for the kings from the east. Armageddon. 
And I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet, three unclean spirits like frogs. For they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them together for the war of the great day of God, the Almighty. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we pick up where we are this week. Verse 15. Behold, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake and keeps his clothes so that he will not walk about naked and men will not see his shame. And they gathered them together to the place, which in Hebrew is called Har Megedon, H-A-R dash M-A-G-E-D-O-N. Seventh bowl of wrath, verse 17. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl upon the air and a loud voice came out of the temple from the throne saying, it is done. And there were flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder. And there was such a great earthquake, such as there had not been since man came to be upon the earth. So great an earthquake was it and so mighty. The great city was split into three parts. And the cities of the nations fell. Babylon the great was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of his fierce wrath. And every island fled away and the mountains were not found. And huge hailstones about 100 pounds each came down from heaven upon men and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail because its plague was extremely severe. And that takes us to the end of chapter 16. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. All right, so last week we talked about the frogs. We talked about how in the Old Testament God was looking for someone to lure the wicked King Ahab into a death trap. And that was in 1 Kings 22, verses 20 to 37. Then an evil spirit stepped forward and volunteered to be a lying spirit in the mouths of Ahab's false prophets. And God said that would work and sent the lying spirit forth. And shortly after that, Ahab asked, of his, asked his prophets if he should battle the Arameans that rang off Gilead. His prophets, influenced by the lying spirits, said he would win. But instead, he was killed. So I'm reviewing this because I think it's important. John tells us that three evil spirits will come forward during the tribulation period. One from the mouth of Satan, one from the mouth of the Antichrist, and one from the mouth of the false prophet. And this verse is where we get the term false prophet. This is verse 13. And I saw un three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Now we can only speculate about the frog-like appearance of these demons. We know that the Egyptians worship Heka, H-E-K-A, which was a frog-headed goddess. And she's one of the oldest goddesses who was said to have demonic powers. And the second plague on Egypt during the days of Moses was actually a plague of frogs. So we know that the frogs are connected with the occult. Witches are often portrayed with frogs and actually use them in their spells. Now, something interesting is that frogs tend to breed in mire and muck, and they're a symbol of uncleanness. So there's other scriptures on this subject. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Timothy 4.1, the Spirit, meaning the Holy Spirit, expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Now friends, something you need to know is that demons are real. 
and they will be very busy during the tribulation period. And this provides insight as to why militant Muslims believe that they can trigger the Battle of Armageddon and win. Then we go on to verse 14. For they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Now, John was talking about the last days when he said in Matthew 24, verses 24 and 25, for false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. Now, the Apostle Paul said the Antichrist will come with the work of Satan displayed in all kinds of power, signs, and lying wonders. <coughs> Excuse me, in 2 Thessalonians 2.9. So when the sixth bowl is poured out, spirits of demons will use miraculous signs to lure the leaders of the world and their God-defying troops into that death trap called the great day of God Almighty or the battle of Armageddon. Now, we talked about why God will allow the battle of Armageddon. I'm going to let you listen to last week's lesson. We're going to carry on to chapter 15. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Now, when I read, I read from the New American Standard, but our book uses the New King James. And for anyone who is new, the book that we've been studying is called The Book of Revelation, The Smart Guide to the Bible series written by Damon R. Duck. And he employs the use of many different sources and he's been studying end times prophecy and the book of revelation for a long long time after the study i can share with you who he's quoted here so he tells us that it's jesus who says i'm coming as a thief let's face it we don't normally expect thieves or we'd prepare for them, right? So this means that the coming of Jesus will be a surprise, but what is Jesus or Christ talking about here? It cannot be the rapture because by this time, that will already have occurred. And who's going to be surprised? It can't be the church because they went in the rapture. So, this is a reference to the coming of Jesus at the end of the tribulation period. And the unclean spirits will gather the armies of the world in Armageddon, and only then will Jesus return and catch them by surprise. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments. That statement is an encouragement for people to remain faithful. These garments or clothes are actually the righteousness of Christ. <coughs> Excuse me. And those who refuse the mark of the beast will be blessed when Jesus returns, but those who take it will be exposed. So Revelation 16, 16, the title here is Armageddon. And they gathered them together to the place in Hebrew, Armageddon. So Armageddon was what the New American Standard used. Here the New King James says Armageddon. Now, Damon tells us that this is the only time the word Armageddon can be found in the Bible. It's a Hebrew word, and it's the name of a place in northern Israel. And when translated, the word means Mount of Megiddo, M-E-G-I-D-D-O. And the Mount of Megiddo, or Megiddo, is a large hill just west of the Jordan River in the plain of Esdralon, or sometimes called the Valley of Jehoshaphat. And the Euphrates River will dry up to allow the 200 million man army to approach 
from the east. Demons will go forth from the satanic trinity, meaning Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet, and gather other armies from all over the world. Now, if you want to understand where Megiddo is, if you look on a map and see where Jerusalem and Bethlehem are and go straight north, you would see that Syria is to the right of this border and Lebanon is directly above it. Nazareth is very close to the top of that border to Lebanon and Megiddo is directly west of it, right up against the Mediterranean Sea almost. Verse 17. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. Now the seventh bowl judgment will be the last, and it will be poured out into the air, and then a voice from the throne of God will say, It is done. And we read in John 19.30, that just before Jesus died on the cross, he said, it is finished. And now, just before Jesus returns to earth, he will say, it is done. Why? Because the remaining events will bring an end to Satan's reign. Revelation 16, 18. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake has, as had not occurred since men were on the earth. Damon tells us, when the seventh bowl is poured into the air, something will happen to the atmosphere. Great flashes of lightning will explode to the ground and thunder will rattle the earth. Fires will break out and a tremendous earthquake will shatter the land. Now, friends, I don't know about you and where you live specifically, but I live in an area where we have fault lines all over the place. Not major ones, but minor ones. And we're within a few hours drive, highway driving, of the San Andreas Fault, which travels, I think, all the way down the western coast of the U.S. up to Alaska. Now, I have never felt a tremor here, but I have in another location, south and west of us. I was in a restaurant with some girls that I was working with in a youth camp, and the building shook to the point that we were pretty well taking shelter under the dining room or under the table in the restaurant. It was like booths. And I've seen lightning close up and I've seen the devastation of forest fires just like those that are burning today. And then there's a tremendous earthquake. So there's some major earthquakes of the last hundred years. Now this is you know, book was written about 2011, so there's a little more information maybe since then. But it says here, USGS reports of 50,000 or more deaths. On December 28, 1908 in Messina, Italy, there were 70,000 to 100,000 deaths. In December 16, 1920 in Gansu, China, 200,000 deaths. September 1st, 1923 in Kanto, Japan, 143,000 deaths. May 22nd, 1927, and forgive me if I don't pronounce this right, it was near Xining, China, X-I-N-I-N-G, China, 200,000 deaths. December 25, 1932, in Gansu, China, again, 70,000 deaths. May 30, 1935, Keta, 
or Quetta, Pakistan, 30,000 to 60,000 deaths. October 5th of 1948, Ashgabat in Turkmenistan, 110,000 deaths. May 31st of 1970, Peru, 66,000 deaths. July 27th of 1976, Tangshan, China, 255,000 deaths. June 20th, 1990, Northwest Iran, 50,000 deaths. December 26th of 2004 in Sumatra, 283,106 deaths. And October 7th of 2005, Pakistan, 79,000 unofficial deaths. This includes deaths from tsunamis, landslides, floods, fires, etc., caused by the earthquakes. It's pretty shocking when you add all those numbers up, isn't it? Verse 19, now the great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Damon tells us that this great earthquake will split the great city of Babylon into three parts, but it will still stand. Now, this cannot be said for other cities because they will be level. Every city on earth except Babylon will be in ruins as the end of the tribulation period approaches. And with Babylon still standing, it will come into remembrance before God. And one of the three angels in Revelation 14.8 predicted Babylon's doom just a short time before this. The Old Testament prophets in Isaiah 13 verses 4 to 6 and verses 19 and 20 and then in Jeremiah 51 7 and verses 25 to 26 predicted Babylon's doom just a short time before this. So the Old Testament prophets predicted her doom long before that. It will be time for those prophecies to be fulfilled. She will get the cup filled with the wine of the fury of his wrath. Verse 20. Then every island fled away and the mountains were not found. <clears throat> Damon tells us, the surface of the whole earth will be changed. Every island will sink beneath the water. Every mountain will be leveled. The prophet Isaiah said the floodgates of heaven will be opened. The earth will reel to and fro like a drunkard. Talked about in Isaiah 24 verses 19 to 23. Now, this seems hard to believe. <clears throat> but the 2004 Sumatra earthquake and tsunami that killed more than 280,000 people actually moved islands and caused the earth to tilt on its axis. Some islands temporarily disappeared under a 30 foot high wall of water. And according to the UN and the International Red Cross, natural disasters are increasing in frequency and intensity but are earthquakes increasing? Some experts say yes. Others say no. The United States Geological Service, also known as USGS, says no. More earthquakes are reported, but it's because there are more stations with better equipment, not more earthquakes. Now, some say earthquakes are not increasing, but the number and severity of aftershocks are. 
So the answer to this question seems to depend on the data used. If it's over 6.0, over 6.5, etc., and how it's broken down. 7.0 in the 1990s versus 7.0 in the 1880s, or 1980s, sorry, total in 2000 versus total in 4000, etc. So he writes, Damon writes, the following charts speak for themselves. The number of magnitudes 7.0 and greater earthquakes per decade since 1900. This is the U.S. Geological Services records. And I want to tell you, you know, I'm not a young person. And my parents were way older than me, like decades and decades older. So they were around in the second number that I'm going to be quoting here. 1900 to 1909, 196 were recorded. 1910 to 1919, and my parents were born in those, between those years, 226. 1920 to 1929, 171. 1930 to 1939, 202. Listen to this number, 1940 to 1949, right in the throes of World War II, 298. 1950 to 1959, 209. 1960 to 1969, 204. 1970 to 1979, also 204. Then 1980 to 1989, only 112. 1990 to 1999, 153. In the year 2000 to 2004, 74. So the total from year 1900 to 2004 is 2,049 earthquakes, magnitude 7.0 and greater. So the average 19.5 magnitude, 7.0 and greater earthquakes per year was 195 per decade. Then the total number of earthquakes worldwide, 2000 to 2005, also from USGS records. Year 2000, 22,256 earthquakes. 2001, 23,534. 2002, 27,454. 2003, 31,419 earthquakes. 2004, 31,194, and 2005, 30,458. Revelation 16, 21. And great hail from heaven fall upon, fell upon men, cast hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. Now the seventh plague talked about in Exodus 9 verses 18 to 25 in Egypt during the days of Moses was hail mixed with fire. It was directed against Isis, the cow-headed goddess of the air. Giant hail killed the cattle in the fields and broke down all the trees. I've seen bad hail, friends. I've seen it kill or destroy a crop of grain because it, it, the weight of the hail knocks the grain down and it can't be harvested when it's flat on the ground and wet. But this plague will be much worse. These hailstones will weigh more than 100 pounds apiece and will beat the earth with a fury. What effect will this have on mankind? 
Will people finally repent of their sins and avoid hell? No. They will still blaspheme God. Now I'm going to do a quick wrap up here. When the seven bowls of God's wrath are poured out, his judgments will come to an end. After the third bowl is emptied, the angel in charge of the waters and the tribulation saints will proclaim these judgments to be just and true in Revelation 16, 5 to 7. The Euphrates River will dry up to make way for the coming of the kings from the east. Revelation 16, 12. Three spirits will come out of the mouths of Satan, the Antichrist and the false prophet to summon the kings of the earth together for the battle of Armageddon. Revelation 16, verses 13 to 16. After the seventh bowl is poured out, a great earthquake will rock the planet, destroying all cities except Babylon, which will be split in three parts. Revelation 16, 18 to 19. Let's pray. Father, this is upsetting. It's shocking. And it's not something that we're looking forward to. I personally believe that we will be in heaven before all of this takes place. But I know that some may not believe the same. But either way, Lord, no matter what may take place in our future, we know that you love us and care for us and that you're interested in every detail of our lives and that you will care for us. So I pray, Lord God, that even as we become in tune with you and as we learn what you have for us, I also pray, Father, that you will give us your peace that passes all understanding and that we will know that we know that we know that you love us and care for us and that you will look after us. And so that any fear or anxiety we may feel about the future, that your peace will calm our hearts and draw us close to you. We give you all the praise, all the glory, all the thanksgiving. In your holy name we pray. Amen.